So we're first going to start out by gathering all the materials that we're going to need to make these snowflakes. So you're definitely just going to want to start with a nice assortment of crystals. I've got some bicones, some rondelles, and even some pearls and some crystal pave beads just for that added texture. You're going to need some pliers. I really like the 3-in-1 tool by Cousin because it includes the round nose pliers, the flat nose, and the wire cutters all in one tool. You're going to need 24 gauge wire. Now you can use gold, silver, or even rose gold for like a trendy look. We're going to need organza ribbon and this is for tying the snowflakes at the top to create your ornaments. And then if you also want to add any sort of charm dangles or chain tassels at the bottom of your snowflakes to make them even more blingy, you can definitely grab some of those as well. Um, I really think maybe snowflake or Christmas themed charms would work well or even if you want a boho look, grab some druzy. Druzy is super trendy right now. I've seen a lot of ornaments made with Druzy, especially at Anthropology and Target. So that may be a cool idea if you really want a modern look. So for step two, you're going to take a 24 gauge wire piece. I cut a piece about two feet long. It depends on how big you want to make your snowflake. Cut the wire longer for a bigger snowflake and smaller for a little mini one. So you're going to make sure that you want to do a small bead first and then graduating up to some large beads in the middle and then the last one's going to be another small one because this is how the arm of your snowflake is going to look. You'd never want to put a big bead here because it has a tendency to sort of make your snowflake off balance because these beads are the closest together in the center. You're going to take this end that you just strung everything on and just string everything back through the beads minus that last one that you have because this is what's going to catch and make the arm of the snowflake. So I'm just stringing all the beads back through. If you're using smaller beads you may not be able to get a 24 gauge piece of wire through the beads two times so you may have to use like a 26 gauge or something. But this is the first arm of the snowflake. This piece here just save for later. We're going to use that to actually connect both of the sides. On the longer end of wire, you're just going to string another arm of the snowflake, keep it in the same order as your first arm, and then string back through all the beads with this longer end of wire. An important thing to know during this tutorial is that you want to make sure all the arms line up right next to each other. If you don't pull this side of the wire tight enough, there's going to be a gap in between these two beads and it's going to look kind of awkward. So make sure that you're just pulling tight and making sure the beads line up right next to each other. To continue with making the arms, just do the same technique that you've been doing, stringing on the beads and then stringing back through every bead but that last one. I usually make around six to seven arms per snowflake depending on if you want a fuller look or if you just want a more simple look. So keep doing that until you have about seven arms and then I'll meet you back here. Once you've completed beading your seven arms, your snowflake should look like this. The most important thing is that you've got the two ends lined up right next to each other. Sometimes the snowflake gets a bit wonky and twists, but make sure you've got these two ends where you started and stopped right up next to each other because then all you have to do to finish is just take this wire and just twist it with your, with your pliers. Cut it really good. Just make a few twists. This just finishes off that end there and then just cut it, cut the excess off, and then just bend it backwards so that it's nice and finished. And then